In this video, we're going to look at how we can create an alternating tread staircase like the one on the right here. So one on the left is a standard staircase drawn in Revit. Uh, sometimes we need to have a space saver staircase, uh, also known as an alternating tread staircase, and that's one on the right. And I'm going to show you how we do that. So I've started a new project and I've uh, got level zero here with the floor drawn in 3D, you can see that. Um, and what I'm going to do is start off by drawing uh, a standard staircase. So into architecture and stair. Uh, before I uh, start that, I'm going to come into here, make sure I've got these um, available to me. I'm just going to choose the private staircase, edit type, duplicate. I'm going to call this one alternating tread. Now, when I'm in here, I do need to change some of these parameters to get it to be how I want it. Um, so for, in this instance, I'm going to change the maximum riser height to the UK maximum, which is 220 millimetres. Uh, the minimum tread depth, I'm going to make it 150, uh, which is less than the UK regulation, but you'll see how we get around that in a minute. Uh, the minimum run width, I'm going to change that to 700. If I was on an alternating tread staircase, you wouldn't want it too wide. Uh, otherwise it makes it quite difficult to, to, to climb. Um, for now I'm just going to click apply and OK and I can then just draw my staircase in. So you can see this coming up now and there it's sitting. If I go into the east view you can see it coming up to my level 1 which I've set at 2.4 metres for this for this particular staircase and when I'm in 3D we can see the staircase is sitting as it should. So I'm just going to Click uh, green tick just to get it so it's looking how I want it to, and that's how you would normally uh, draw it. But you can see it's very, very steep, a lot steeper uh, than it would normally be, just where I change those parameters. So clicking on the staircase, going into edit type, I can now change the run type. I want to get rid of these risers because I want it to be an open uh, riser staircase. So in the run type here, just click on uh, the little dot next to it, and then I can duplicate this one and just call this open riser so I've got two the same uh, and then I'm, where it says risers I'm just going to uncheck that in the tread material I'm just going to change this oak flooring and you'll see why later uh, to a different type of oak flooring so I'm just going to go oak this should be down here somewhere an oak flooring the espresso one so I'm just going to click on that one and use the oak flooring espresso and you'll see why later click apply and click OK and OK. And what we can now see is we've got uh, no risers in there and we can see that the uh, finish on the tread itself has changed. Now just to make things a bit easier I'm just going to change both of these uh, railings just to the uh, glass panel bottom fill. Just makes it easier to see what's going on when we get into this stage over here. So when we look at the staircase, especially when we look down at it from above, we can see that uh, it's a very, very short tread on there. It's very narrow, it's only 150 mil. That would be incredibly difficult to climb um, and it certainly wouldn't satisfy uh, any UK building regulations. So what we need to do now is add on some bits to the front of these treads to actually make them uh, comply. Now, when we look at this, um, if I just run a section through, so a 2D section through here, and then just open that up, we can see that um, our nosing has got this profile on it. We don't want that. We want it to be completely flat if possible. So again, just clicking on the stair itself. Um, when I go into edit type and I go into this run type again, um, we've got this nosing profile here. So I can click on the nosing profile, scroll to the very top and just click default, click apply and then OK and then OK again. Now you can see that's just squared it off there, which is what we want. Now when I come down to here, I can measure the distance between the nosing and the edge of the string. And I've got 106, so I can make my um, step stick out 100 mil more if I need to, which I'm going to do next. So the next thing I do is, is actually to create some bits to stick on the front of these um, to create the alternating tread. Uh, to do that, I'm actually going to create a new family. Uh, so if I go up into File, go into New, and then Family, uh, the type of family is going to be a generic, and it's going to be a face-based. just makes it easier to place it onto the staircase. So just click onto that, click OK. And if I open up the front, I can now start drawing the shape that I want it to be. So uh, this is going to be an extrusion. 
and I'm just going to use the straight line tool for now. And I'm going to come across here about 500 mil, um, which is about right. And then I'm going to come up that 100 mil, which was the max maximum amount it can stick out. Um, once I've done that, I can then come along about 300, maybe just a bit less, 280, something like that. I'm then going to change to the spline tool, which is this one up here. Uh, come across a bit further, just left click there, come down, bring it down to about here somewhere, and then finish up on the end here. That now gives me that nice curve. Um, if I want to alter it at all, just click on the curve, and then I can bring things around, I can drag things in, make it a bit more curved if I want to. And then once I've done that, um, I want to uh, go into the reference level again, back into here, uh, just click the green tick to finish the extrusion, and then when I click on this, I want to change the thickness of that from 250 just down to 50 mil. The reason it's 50 mil because that's the thickness of the treads on the existing staircase. And then we can see we've now got this. Once I've done that, I can now want to uh, load it into the project and close it. It'll ask me to save. Uh, just save it into that one for now. Uh, do you want to save change families? Yes, I do. Uh, just in case I need this somewhere else. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to save it to my desktop for now. And we'll call this stair nosing. And I'm going to call this stair nosing too because I've already done one previously. So now I'm back into here. When I'm in my 3D, I can change how I'm going to place it, either place on the work plane or place on face. Make sure place on face is selected. And I can then use my space bar key. Oh, find the model again, there it is. And I can just use the space bar key just to keep rotating it around, and I want to snap it into position onto there. The other thing I forgot to do, can you see we've got a different color here? So if I double click on this, uh, click on that, and then where it says material by category, just go back into here, and I'm gonna choose that same oak flooring. We had last time, this espresso one, so just click onto there, double click on that, and once I've done that, load into the project and close, save, yes, and I do want to overwrite the existing. So now we can see it's the same. Um, so now when I'm in here, you'll find that in architecture and in component, you can see my stair nosing twos there. And um, what I'm gonna do, just gonna orientate this so I've got it uh, in this plane so I can actually see this corner a bit easier. And every other tread, I'm just going to Place it in that corner, all the way up. Just every other tread. And then when I come back down this side, I can now use the space bar key just to spin it over. And then again, every other tread. Place it down. Like so. Can be a little bit of a pain sometimes. And now we can see we've got these alternating treads uh, going up. So we step on the right one with your right leg, left leg on that one, right leg, and so on and so forth. Um, looking at this now, as I look at it, you can see I've got quite a bit of a space in between here. So I could probably have made this um, one a bit longer. I could go back in and change it and make the whole thing a bit longer just so that they're a bit narrower together. Um, sometimes when you come into here, depending on what you've got switched on, uh, so here I've got my, th I had my thin line switched on, now I don't. Um, so when I when you click on uh, move into here, can you see we've got these lines that I don't particularly want? Uh, so to do to get rid of those, go into modify, um, use this one here, this line work tool, so click onto that, and then we've got these line styles that I can choose. Um, I'm going to want invisible lines, so if I click on invisible lines, you can see I can now select that line, it gets rid of it. Select that line, it gets rid of it, all the way up. And I just keep going all the way along. Uh, once I've done that, I can also select this one here. Uh, sometimes you have to press it three times to get rid of it. And then to put the line back in, I'm just gonna go where it says invisible lines, just go by category again, click on this one, and then just drag its end down to here. And then you can see it's, um, when we moved into here, we can now see it's gone into there. Um, 
if you have problems like this where it's gone invisible, just shut down your 3D, um, come back into your 3D views, and open it back up again. And then what you'll find, um, it's a little glitch in Revit, sometimes it does this. And you can continue this um, line work tool on all those, those lines going up to there. And then you can now start to see this um, staircase is starting to take shape and starting to look like how we want it to. Um, if you want to change the bottom, so here we can see we've got this sticking out. We don't want this sticking out. Uh, when I click on the staircase itself and then go into edit stairs at the top here, I can then just click onto the, the right string there, for instance, and on the, on the top left hand here in the properties box, I've got the lower end cut, it says vertical cut. I can now change that to a horizontal cut, click apply, and you can see it then brings that down. I could do the same on this one, just so they're both the same. So horizontal cut, then now going both all the way down in green tick. And back she comes again now you can and again you can see that it's quite glitchy where i've got this um it's gone all clear so again just shut down the 3d view open up the 3d view and it will come back just fine no problem at all um, and that's how you, you you can change that if you wanted to change the railing type uh, we can do that just by clicking on the railing and then you've got your different types of railing you can have in there. So you can have the pipe one if you wanted that. Um, I'm just going to stick with this glass bottom one for now. Um, if you want this to come right down to the bottom, uh, we just need to go where it says edit path. And then just click on the, the pink line and just drag that forwards. And then you can see when I green tick it, it now comes down and adds this little bit onto the bottom there, which is quite a nice touch, I think. And that is how you do an alternating tread staircase.